What if I told you that Ferrari has built an engine so radical that it could give it an advantage impossible for the rest of the teams to achieve in 2026? What if, furthermore, the first simulator tests already indicate that they are ahead of everyone before even rolling on the track? Stay because this could be the beginning of an era dominated by those in red, or the most costly mistake in their history. Ferrari has made what is probably the most drastic and risky decision in its entire recent history in Formula One. Completely abandoning the development of the 2025 car, the SF25, just beginning the month of April. This measure not only breaks with any conventional technical manual, but also challenges the competitive DNA of the Italian team. Because at Ferrari, even in its worst years, there was always competition. There was always pressure from the Tifosi, from the press, from sponsors, from history. And yet, in 2025, they have decided to tell the world, we are not going to fight this championship, because we are already manufacturing the future. This change does not occur in a vacuum. The decision was led by Frederic Vasseur, team boss, who after analyzing the limited performance of the SF25 in the first races of the year and probably anticipating that they would not catch up to McLaren or Mercedes in pure performance, ordered to immediately stop all development, aerodynamics and evolution programs. The message was clear and unfiltered. Everything is reinvested in SF26. Everything is redirected to Project 678, the technical core that will define Ferrari in 2026 under the new regulations. And this turn was not a simple technical strategy, it was a philosophical break. Ferrari has historically been an organization of gradual responses, of evolving concepts, of prioritizing the present in the hope of improving step by step. But now they are operating as if they were a technology startup, betting everything on one card, leaving behind, playing it safe. Never before in the modern era has Ferrari sacrificed an entire season to prepare for the next one so far in advance. From April 2025, all wind tunnel hours, all CFD simulations, suspension department efforts, ERS system integration, even the technical staff schedule, were reoriented to the future. And what do they gain from this bet? Time. In a sport where every millisecond translates into millions of investment, Ferrari has accumulated approximately 15% more effective development time compared to its direct rivals. And that margin, in a context of budget restrictions and limit of hours in simulation, can mean an insurmountable advantage if they manage to translate it on the track. While Red Bull is still correcting the RB21's problems and McLaren is trying to stay competitive without losing focus on the current championship, Ferrari is already living in 2026. How did they achieve it? First, by abandoning any evolution of the current car, Ferrari freed up hundreds of hours of wind tunnel and CFD simulation that, under normal conditions, would be divided between two work fronts, maintaining the performance of the current car and developing the future. That decision allowed them to concentrate absolutely everything on 2026, while their rivals were still divided between the present and the future. The result was an accumulation of around 15% more useful hours in aerodynamic and thermodynamic development compared to Red Bull, Mercedes or McLaren, and these hours were not wasted. The information leaked from Maranello reveals that simulation tests of the Project 678 engine and its integration with the SF26 chassis have delivered levels of correlation between simulation and reality greater than 90%. In simple terms, this means that what Ferrari sees on its screens is almost certainly what it will see on the track. This is a treasure in today's era of restricted development. Because if the data says that you are on the right track and you can trust it, you can move faster, further, and with less margin for error. But it's not just a matter of time or volume of testing. It is the quality of those simulations that makes the difference. Ferrari has fine-tuned its cross-correlation system between static simulator, cockpit pilot, physical wind tunnel, and CFD virtual model so that data that previously took weeks to validate is now verified in a matter of days. Learning that previously took a month is now resolved in a cycle of 48 to 72 hours. This not only optimizes the design of the car, accelerates the ability to respond to unexpected problems. Another key element is the interdisciplinary approach that Ferrari has applied. There are no longer departments working in isolation. The engine design, the chassis aerodynamics, the active suspension, the hybrid system electronics, everything is synchronized. The simulations are not run separately. Each virtual engine test includes real variables of downforce, thermal degradation, tire pressure, brake system temperature, and even driver behavior. Ferrari is modeling not one car, but an entire racing ecosystem. And that has incalculable value. Because in 2026, F1 changes radically. New electrical power ratios, new aerodynamic constraints, 
and an even more complex hybrid architecture are introduced. Whoever best understands the integration of all these factors from now on will have an advantage that cannot be recovered in one season. Ferrari wants to be that team. He wants to reach the first test of 2026 with a car that has already lived 50 Grand Prix in a simulator, that has already failed and learned without losing real time, and that can evolve from the first day, not from the fifth. Furthermore, this technical confidence is filtering down to the human level. Drivers like Leclerc and Hamilton are actively participating in the simulation of race scenarios, engine mapping adjustments and brake temperature control to validate that virtual behavior translates into real sensations. This generates something very valuable, cross-feedback between machine and driver before the car is even ready to roll. They are not preparing for a shakedown. They are preparing to win from kilometer one. For all this, it is valid to ask. Is Ferrari building not only a better car, but a more efficient development cycle than any other team on the grid? Is it replicating, in its own way, what Red Bull dominated between 2021 and 2023, but with a completely different architecture? The answer is not yet on the track. But in the data, in the models, in the Maranello servers, Ferrari already leads. Because recent history is full of broken promises, of revolutionary concepts that never came to fruition, of cars that in theory were invincible, and that fell apart on the track. Skepticism does not come out of the air. It is the result of a decade of structural errors, hasty decisions and failures that have left Ferrari more often in frustration than in glory. This time it may not be different. Although preliminary simulations and data for the steelhead engine and SF26 platform are very promising, the technical leap is so radical that any error in the actual execution could derail the entire project. And that is the biggest fear within Maranello. Because it is not a moderate evolution. It's a breakup. A complete redesign. A mechanic never tested under the extreme conditions of a calendar of 24 races on five continents. A design error in cylinder head cooling. An incompatibility between the heat of the engine block and the efficiency of the ERS. A poorly resolved thermal oscillation between the steel structure and the chassis composite materials. Each of these points is a potential threat that could make the car unviable in the race, even if it works perfectly in simulation. And we must not forget another critical factor. Reliability. Ferrari has been suffering in this regard for years. In 2022, its power unit was perhaps the most powerful in the paddock, but also the most prone to braking. In 2023, they tried to be more conservative, and the car lost competitiveness. In 2024, they achieved some stability, but still with problems in thermal management and hybrid systems. Now, in 2026, they are betting on a design with tighter tolerances, more aggressive temperatures and less conventional materials. If the reliability is not 100%, it does not matter how much power the engine has, because they will not finish races. Furthermore, there is a deeper strategic risk, less visible from the outside but very real from within, the loss of the present. By abandoning 2025, Ferrari has renounced all sporting pressure capacity this year. This means giving up media attention, limiting the motivation of the pilots, and risking the morale of the technical team if the results do not arrive in 2026. What happens if the SF26 fails in the tests? What if performance is mediocre in the first five races? There will be no plan B. There is no other project running in parallel. It's all or nothing. And that can also have a knock-on effect on its stars. Leclerc and Hamilton accepted the sacrifice of 2025 with the promise of a competitive car the following year. But if in March 2026 that car does not comply, it will be very difficult to maintain its emotional and sporting commitment. Especially in the case of Lewis, who arrives at Ferrari with his sights set on an eighth title. He didn't come to build, he came to win. And he will only wait if he sees that there are real possibilities. Even on a political level, Ferrari has a lot at stake. This strategy has been endorsed by the senior managers of the Scuderia and by the executive leadership of the Stellantis Group. But if the plan fails, it won't just be a technical error. It will be an institutional crisis. And F1 has shown that when a team loses technical direction and political stability at the same time, it can take years to recover. So yes, there are compelling reasons to believe that Ferrari can lead in 2026. But there are also enough precedents, technical variables and internal dynamics that force us to consider an alternative scenario, that of a Ferrari that risked everything to return to the top, and that finished further than ever. And now that you know every detail of this monumental move, I want you to think carefully. Are we facing a silent revolution that only Ferrari had the courage to start? Or before the umpteenth miscalculation of a team that has not been able to keep its own promises for more than a decade? Let me know in the comments what you think about all this.